All right, good morning. This is Ethan with BIMSmith. Um, this is our Revit 2022 launch day video, um, highlighting some of the new features of Revit 2022. Um, I know we've all been waited, uh, waiting here with, with bated breath to see what um, features and improvements um, Autodesk would come out with um, for their newest version of Revit. Um, and I think we've got some pretty good ones today. So um, let's, let's get started. If you wanna see more content like this, uh, don't forget to like and follow BIMSmith for more. All right, so first up, let's talk about walls. So um, Autodesk has been making some, some steady improvements in wall functionality. Uh, they started last year with sloped walls, and this year they're carrying on the tradition by giving us kind of more things to do with basic walls. Um, so here we have just a very simple um, wall layer here. And uh, you all remember the drop down from last year where you can make it vertical or you can make it slanted. Um, that's of course still here. You can go ahead and slant that wall um, just like you could in Revit 2021. Um, but there's a third option now, which is tapered. Um, and so um, you can pull in um, that option and now it gives you some additional parameters. Um, so uh, each wall that you want to make tapered is actually gonna have to be overridden in type properties first. Um, so let's head over there just to check out how that works. Um, so likewise here in your, your assembly editor, there's an additional um, checkbox field over here on the side that says variable. Um, so I've just made my core a variable layer, um, hit that little checkbox, uh, which allows me to make this wall tapered. So um, we're gonna hit that override button over here and you'll see that I get a couple more grips. So of course I can just click and drag, which is um, quick and easy um, to show you guys how to make this, this wall taper. Um, and that's, that's pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty painless right there um, to make this wall tapered. Of course, you can get a little more precise with it. Um, so we can just kind of make that even on both sides. Um, and right away we see we have a tapered wall. Um, so let's see what else we can do with it. Let's create a wall sweep, um, see how that behaves. Um, so you'll notice that this wall sweep is aligned with that tapered face, which is pretty cool, pretty nice right there. Um, so if I want to drag that out, it'll just get more angled. Um, and it's gonna look accurate in elevation, section, and all the rest of those things. So we see that it is, in fact, a tapered wall. That is pretty darn cool, guys. All right, so um, let's see what that section looks like. If I drag my box in there, yep, we can see that there is, in fact, a, a core layer that has become tapered with that block hatch to it. Uh, and then two layers of gypsum on either side that kind of maintain um, their size. That is that is pretty cool, guys. Um, all right, so you know, we're, there's obviously a few more things we probably wanna check out here. So let's go ahead and put a door in this wall just to see what happens. Um, okay, so that's a little bit outside my section box. Maybe I need to make this wall a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead and drag that out, okay. So yeah, may need to do a little bit of, of uh, customization here with this, this door, making sure that it's gonna sit with maybe the untapered side of it um, in the family editor. Um, maybe just turning off the trim on the side of the tapered side of that wall. Um, but yeah, you can see that that gets us a little bit closer to, um, to doing what we want to do. All right, so there's not the only improvement that Autodesk has added to walls in this release. Uh, we can also now turn on and off the visibility of non-core layers. Um, so I know you've probably had the, uh, the great water cooler debate, right? Do you model paint or do you not model paint? Uh, well, this might actually put that question to bed, guys. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a standard vertical wall again, uh, though you wouldn't have to. This does work with, with vertical walls. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a couple more walls here. Um, and then I hit VG, uh, Visibility Graphics, um, pull this up, and if I head on down to Walls, expand it, you'll see that now I have a checkbox for non-core layers. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off. Sure enough, we have just the core of the walls. Um, so that's pretty nice. Uh, I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to, um, you know, see those finished layers, um, whether it's because, you know, we've modeled them thicker than they are in reality for, uh, for Revit's sake or, um, you know, what have you, but um, this, this is much simpler in order to, you know, just kind of get your dimensions to snap to the faces of the core. Um, you know, if that's kind of your firm standard, um, you know, this makes it very, very simple, um, kind of easy for, for documentation purposes. Uh, of course, those layers are still there. They're just turned off. Um, so you can still get all of the, the great features of uh, material takeoffs and schedules and things like that. So um, that's kind of a quick look at how walls work in Revit 2022. 
All right, so those are some of the improvements to walls. Now let's talk a little bit about some improvements to annotations. Um, so one of the big um, annotation uh, improvements is gonna be multi-hosted tags. Um, so you can see over here, I've got a series of windows in this wall, um, and I want to go ahead and um, just tag this, this window once, uh, instead of having all these different um, uh, uh, tags here going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and show my leader line um, so that you know exactly what I'm tagging. Uh, and then you'll notice up here in the ribbon, I've got add and remove hosts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button uh, and start adding windows. Um, so you can see that immediately I start to get some additional leaders, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and just click back on modify um, and I can move this around. You'll see my leaders are all kind of adjusting. Um, now, if I wanted to kind of drag these down, maybe make this annotation look a little less crazy, I can do that. Um, might also be nice though, if I was to do something maybe more like this, there we go. Maybe that's how I want to do that. Um, keep everything a little bit more orthogonal. Um, but now I've got just one tag tagging for windows. Um, so this can be helpful in, in spots where, you know, you just don't have a lot of space. Um, maybe I don't want this in the middle of, um, all these dimensions. I can drag it out over here. Uh, and then just go ahead and tag uh, all these windows with one tag. Um, just, just different options, uh, but I think this adds some additional flexibility to, um, um, to tagging and, uh, and just kind of overall improvements. Um, so of course, this is just uh, kind of your basic um, type mark, um, but you could uh, obviously do this with a number of other uh, shared parameters. Um, which, which could be pretty nice. So um, the same thing, of course, works with wall tags. Um, you know, I can go ahead and tag some different walls, uh, though I imagine eventually I'm gonna tag a wall of a different type. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna run into another new feature, um, which is the, uh, the varies um, fill within, um, you know, families of, of the same category, um, but with different type or instance parameters. So since this is a type mark, um, you're not gonna see it here. Um, but obviously, if you look over in my properties box, they have different heights and different top constraints. So instead of getting an empty field like we have traditionally in Revit, um, we now get a top constraint um, with a varies field. So this way you kind of know that there's a couple different things going on here. Um, and it may give you some pause before you just type in something um, that you don't want to. Um, so that, that's good. That might cut down on, on some errors um, in firms. Um, I think that's a, that could be a really nice feature. Um, another improvement for annotations um, is going to be adding um, uh, prefixes and suffixes to dimensions by type. Um, so that's, that's an interesting uh, idea. So say you wanted to use a specific dimension style for maybe an overall dimension. Um, you could go ahead and create um, a dimension style called overall. Um, and then down in um, the dimension prefix and suffix type parameters, you could go ahead and um, put in a, uh, the text that says overall. Um, and so what that's going to do is go ahead and say, um, this is my well, that's actually not an overall dimension, that's just a grid dimension. Um, but if it were an overall dimension, you could you could go ahead and, and just flag that by type. Um, so that way you don't have to go in and actually you know manually edit the suffix. Um, although you can still add a suffix to this, so we can make it overall-ish, because uh, it's actually just going to the grid lines. Um, so that's, that's a couple of the improvements that they've made to uh, annotations. Um, you know, I think these could really kind of speed up workflows and processes. Um, these are some, some pretty nice features here. All right, so that was a little bit about annotations. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about schedules. So one of the big improvements uh, in Revit 2022 is going to be multi-category schedules that allow you to um, schedule subcategories. So you'll notice um, that there's some uh, additional options here. So in this case, um, this would be uh, I'm showing you how you can get to um, subcategories and filter by uh, fascias and wall sweeps, which are, of course, subcategories of walls and roofs. Um, of course, if you did this, you would only find things that are both uh, roofs and walls, um, so that's not really very helpful. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set these to none, um, uh, or set the back to family and type. And so you can see here, I can come in um, and I can, I can um, find something... Uh, so let's say I had uh, a wall sweep and a fascia that were actually both named the same thing, right? I could um, just go ahead and type in uh, cornice um, and we would get um, any of those, those um, families that we have. Uh, so this is probably not the best project to show that in, um, but just know that that's available um, and try that out maybe on a, a something with, with some, some of those, those subcategories on it. Uh, another um, f uh, new feature is the ability to create um, door schedules or a single schedule on multiple um, 
multiple sheets, so split schedules across sheets. Um, and so this kind of works the same way as, uh, uh, you know, when you create uh, do, uh, dependent views. Uh, this is sort of a dependent schedule view. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and it's up here on the ribbon. You just click split and place. Um, so we, we go ahead and we split this and we put it on different sheets. Um, you have two different options, split evenly or split custom. Um, so you'll notice that the, the unit down here is not in rows, but in height. Um, I think a good future feature for this is probably you just want to have 10 rows of the schedule. So you would just type in 10 rows. Uh, of course, if you know what your scale is, you can probably get there as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and type in uh, custom because um, that'll actually allow me to adjust it after the fact on the fly. Uh, I'm going to set this to like eight inches for now. Um, and we're going to go ahead and hit split in place. And so it's going to open up a sheet view, which is my first floor. I'm just going to go ahead and place this view. Um, and then it will place the rest of the schedule in the exact same spot on my second sheet. So it's just going to be on top of all this other stuff over here. Um, now you'll notice that it's split in kind of in the middle of the first floor. So say I wanted my door schedule um, on this sheet to have all the doors on the first floor. Well, I can actually just drag this down um, to 132B right here. Um, and so now I've got all of my first, um, my first floor doors on the same uh, view as my sheet. So you could do this for room finishes. You could do this for um, door schedules, things like that. Um, this works great, obviously, if you have a schedule that's just so massive and won't fit on one sheet. Um, but it also maybe just uh, can help you get the right information um, next to the right plan. Um, and yet, you know, if I head back over to my door schedule, um, everything is together and still kind of in one place, which is which is helpful, I think, from just keeping everything organized and uh, not having, um, you know, six different door schedules over here in your um, schedules drop down. So um, I think this is a great improvement as well. Um, it'll help. Um, keep things a little bit more organized. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the grids in 3D. So I think you probably already noticed this uh, when I was working on um, my wall, um, but now you can use uh, grids um, in 3D as, as references, um, just the way that they introduced uh, levels as references a couple years back. Um, if I go ahead and get rid of my section box, you're gonna see that um, you know, I've got all my building grids out here now. Um, I can select them. Um, I can edit them in 3D on the fly. Um, I can see kind of where they slice through the building. Um, and it helps keep me organized even when I'm working in a, in a 3D view. Um, so that just, that's a, a great feature of, of being able to kind of see where uh, your levels, your grids intersect, um, kind of get that information um, all in 3D. All right, so that was a little bit about the uh, schedules uh, in Revit 2022. Um, now let's talk a little bit about materials in the material browser. Um, so there's a very, very small, um, but very helpful uh, adjustment that they've made to the material browser. Um, so the material browser will actually remember now the last um, tab that you had open when you were using it. So um, I was in the appearance tab there. So when I click on, appear on uh, the materials button again, uh, appearances pops up again. Um, so this was not the default behavior um, before traditionally. Um, so this could be pretty nice, especially if you know, you're trying to do the same thing over and over again. It's kind of annoying to always have to click over to appearance. Um, so this should, this should save us at least a couple of clicks, uh, which, is, which is pretty nice. Um, all right, so the very last um, feature that I wanted to kind of show um, was uh, they've, you know, in the last few years, uh, Autodesk has been adding additional support for um, PDFs. So we were able to import PDFs, um, and now we're actually able to uh, create PDF files directly from Revit without the use of uh, a separate um, PDF printer or print PDF driver. Um, so uh, this way, you know, you don't have to use uh, Adobe or uh, Bluebeam or any of those other um, uh, pay, pay for uh, options. Um, there's, there's now a native option directly in Revit. Um, and so it's very similar, of course, to being able to print. You can um, set up um, sheet sets, which uh, the default project is not. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and find my two sheets. Go ahead and check those. Um, and then um, we're going to go from there. Um, so, you know, there's different setup options. You can name it. You can put it into a specific location, um, combine them. Um, page size, uh, it'll actually use the sheet size, which is pretty nice. I'm going to zoom 100% of size, center it, of course, um, color, all of these things. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's also some of these options down here that have happened for a long time. So view links in blue. Uh, so that's kind of the way that links currently appear in Revit. Um, you know, we can hide unreferenced view tags, which is a pretty nice option. Um, 
region edges mask coincident lines. Yeah, let's go ahead and check that and uh, replace half tone with thin lines. So if, if you, you know, your printer doesn't support um, printing in gray or whatever, um, you can you can do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. So I'm going to export this PDF um, and I'm going to save those settings. Um, and so this will pop up in just a second. All right, um, and since this has come straight out of um, Revit, just like you would expect, the section tags are all linked up. Um, all the different views um, and links work with one another. So if I wanna go back to my first floor plan, I can do that. Um, and it's it's all the scale and on the right sheets. So um, yeah, no more printing off PDFs that don't have all of um, Revit's functionality to them and um, are having to use you know something free that you got off the internet. Um, now we have uh, native native PDF exporting, which is again, pretty exciting. All right, so leave me some comments. Um, what do you think of Revit 2022? Are these the features you were hoping for? Um, these look like some, some pretty good features to me, to us here at BIMSmith. Um, we're looking forward to um, you know getting our hands on some of the additional API features, of course, um, some of the additional options that are, are gonna be available to us in Dynamo. Um, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe to BIMSmith for, for more content like this.